Hello there, THP 494 and 598 Matthew here. All right, so we've dug in our heels here a little bit. We've kind of unraveled a few complicated things in terms of thinking about control panels and thinking about displays and thinking about how we can draw one panel uh, that spans or draw one window rather that spans multiple displays. And now the question is, all right, so we get all that. That's all well and good. That's really quite fantastic. Thanks so much, Matt. Um, but why? Why and how can I start to think about that in a meaningful way? And I think for us to really dig into that and really understand what that means, what we should do is we should look at a very specific context of a particular example. Now, this is just one kind of example, right? And that's okay. Um, but it at least gives us a place to start talking about what we have to think about. So let's imagine the situation where we want to drive a video wall. And not only do I want to drive just any old video wall, I would like to drive a video wall that is four HD displays side by side, right? So one, two, three, four. Yeah, who doesn't want to do this? I've got one ginormous video wall at my disposal. It is really quite wonderful. I love it. But one of the things that I have to start to think about is the fact that now all of a sudden I have something that is 7,860 pixels wide by 1080 pixels tall. Now, uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have any display uh, technologies quite yet in terms of cables that support this kind of bandwidth that's passing over the actual physical cable itself. So we have to take a break from thinking about um, or we need to think about both, rather, the arrangement of the displays as well as how I'm going to draw that because, whoa, Nelly, that is going to be a little bit dicey and much more complicated for me to think about drawing, right? That's not just as simple as, oh, I'm going to draw this one really simple, easy thing, right? I've, now I've got to start to consider, whoa, I might have something really complicated that I might need to draw. So with that in mind, right, we need to also understand that our kind of speed limit or our kind of size limit in ter terms of W, Q, U, X, G, A, so many letters, right, or the kind of maximum bandwidth that we're going to have to pass over a DVI dual link is going to be 3840 by 2400, right? And like there's, a, you, there's some fudging here that could probably happen. Um, but for the most part, this is a great place for us to kind of settle in terms of how we think about 4K display. And this is, if we really break it apart, right? So this is four quadrants that are 1200 by 1920. So I've got four of those. Whew, that's great. That's excellent. I love that. What do I do with that? How do I make that work? Oh dear, right? Because this arrangement certainly doesn't look like this arrangement. How can I start to pull that apart? Especially because if I start to think about what's going on, right? My uh, rudimentary system diagram, my simple system diagram like this, right? Is gonna look like I've got a computer and I'm gonna actually need to think about attaching that to a piece of distribution equipment, right? I need like a video distro. Like a, in this case, I would probably use a data path. Um, you could also use a triple head. Well, you couldn't use a triple head in this case because that's only three outs and we need four outs. Uh, but there are other kinds of video distribution hardware that we could use. But we've got to take that signal from the computer and then get it out to all four displays. And I want the four displays in a line, but what I send to this distro needs to be a rectangle that looks like this. Holy smokes, how do I think about that? And the answer to that question is that now what I need to do is I need to instead think about this arrangement, right? This kind of quadrant of displays as being broken up into sectors that I'm then going to think about arranging in a linear way, right? That's, that is the challenge that we have for ourselves. And that's the way that we've got to kind of think about this a little bit. And in this particular example, what we're not going to do is we're not going to kind of like add the, the complicated element of thinking about uh, what does my control display look like? Because certainly there would be another control display that exists somewhere, right? And 
now I've got to really think about, okay, I'm drawing a window and there's a control display and that's also attached to all of this. And how do I make all of that work? For right now, put that fear out of your mind, take a deep breath. And what we're going to focus on is thinking about how we actually arrange something and break something up to go from being a quadrant like this to being a line array like this. Okay. So where do we start and how do we think about that? And oh my goodness gracious, <clears throat> that's going to be a little bit frustrating. That's all right. Let's go ahead and grab uh, one of our panel selects here. Let's make a copy. Uh, let's take a look inside of this. And this time, instead of worrying about the interface, right, let's dive in here to our output. Now here in our output, we're going to go ahead and we're not going to work with the banana because the banana is like, not totally the right thing for us to work with here. So our movie file here, instead, uh, let's go ahead and grab something that's going to span the whole width of our image. And in this case, I want to use the drums. These oil drums are really sassy looking. Great. Now, I also need to kind of let go of the idea of this uh, background, right? Like that's not exactly what I want. I'm going to actually turn that off here in my panel. Yoink. Okay, bye. Okay, so again, our dimensions here are going to be like a little bit wonky, right? Because um, we're thinking about how this works for uh, our um, non-commercial license. And so we're not totally thinking about what this would be in a, a kind of like enormous server distribution kind of setting. And that's okay. Because the mathematic principles still hold, all of the aspect ratios still hold. It's just a matter of the fact that the numbers are going to look a little bit different. So that's okay. So first things first, let's go ahead and head, go ahead and add a constant. And we're going to give this constant a resolution of 1280 by 180. Great. Right, so we can imagine this is one, two, three, four of our 169 displays. Let's go ahead and composite together these two elements. Layer order matters here. So if you're following along very closely, you'll want to make sure that our constant is on the top and our L drums are on the bottom. We're going to set our transform so that our fixed layer is input one. We're going to go ahead and set this to native resolution, right? So now we've uh, maintained our aspect ratio for our original input image. And we can see that we've got one image here that spans the whole length of that. Whew. Sassy. All right, let's go ahead and add this to a null. And we're going to let this stuff just like hang out for one hot second. Because what we're going to add next is we are going to add some containers. So let's go ahead and add a container here. So container uh, one, and let's give it a different name. Let's call this quad one, as in quadrant run, quadrant one. And we're going to make it size me.parent.par.w divided by two, right? So we want this to be half the width. And you guessed it, we also want it to be control paste. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I saw like control paste. Uh, I have the height in here also. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and set the panel to be dot slash BG, right? We're just like setting up a bunch of things. And if we dive inside here, let's add a text top. Right, this is going to help us just understand what's going on. Our resolution is going to be our parent's resolution, so me dot parent par width height. Let's go ahead and for the text, we're going to ditch derivatives, default text there. We're going to give it a value, so turn value on. And in the value, we're going to use me.parent, so my parent's digits. And we don't need these decimal points. Yoink. Lovely. And let's give it a much bigger size. Yes, please. We can set it to uh, auto fit. Love it. And attach it to a null. And we'll call our null bg. Great. So now what we should be able to see is there's one. Okay, so why did we do all that lame work, Matt? That's because now we can take this copy, paste, oops, copy, paste, paste, paste. 
one, two, three, four, right? If we look out here, okay, those are all stacked together. What gives? Again, don't forget about layout. We'll do left to right, and we'll do a maximum of two per line. And now we can start to see that we can take advantage of our containers as a way of thinking about how we're managing our display space. Right, so we can start to think about our containers as a way of being able to think about uh, and simulate a kind of distribution of images. So you'll notice here that my one, two, three, four happens to correspond, right, to that idea that we looked at not that long ago uh, with our like very rudimentary kind of system planning situation over here. So let's squish this down. Oh dear. Come back, window. Um, where'd you go? Oh, bother. Uh, this guy, which is hiding from us for whatever reason. I don't know what reason. And now I can't get him back. Cool. Aha, there it is. Okay. So this bad boy, right? So one, two, three, four. That happens to correspond, sure enough, to one, two, three, four. Okay, great. Well, but I also want to think about it as one, two, three, four, right, in a line. And you know what, Tex? We can do that. We can put these in a line. Ain't nobody say says we can't do this, right? So this allows us to start to think about how these are arranged in physical space and simultaneously start to think about how they're arranged in the kind of virtual space. Okay, we could also, while we're at it, right, we could take our null, and we could make it nice and big and juicy, right? There are no rules about how you set, uh, set up your network, right? My rule is like, make it tidy. But other than that, like, do what it takes for you to uh, kind of visually make sense of what the heck is going on for you. Okay, so this is what I want to do, right? I want to take this image, I want to stretch it across these four different kind of quadrants, and then I want it to be broken up here so that it works just the right way. Okay, how do I get started? Let's dive here into quad one. Let's go ahead and add a select, right? Our good old friend, the select. This allows us to start to think about how we could set this up to behave modularly, right? And we'll. We'll see what I mean by that here in a second. So let's go ahead and select here. From here, we're going to crop. And our crop, we're gonna actually going to do, um, we're going to rely on fraction here because it's going to be fast. Um, but if you were really, uh, if it was really important for you to know exactly the pixel placement, which it is likely to be important for you to think about in the case of uh, something like this, then we could actually change this from being fraction to being pixels. So in this case, I want to start my crop left at zero. I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to dial from the right. I want to come in 0.75 from the right. Or excuse me, I want to come into 0 0.25. Whoa, had a moment there. Brain, thank you. All right. Now we'll go ahead and attach that to our background instead. Looking pretty, looking pretty good. Uh, while we're at it, let's go ahead and just copy these. Ain't no reason to do more work than we need to, right? We already did that once. Let's paste those in here. This time, instead of starting at zero, we're going to start at 0.25 and we're going to go to 0 0.5, right? You can see that we've got like a quarter of the image at a time that we're working with. We'll do the same thing here for three. Zero point five, zero point seven five. And last but not least, we'll finish us all off here with four. And we can drive that in. Zero point seven five. Oops. Zero point seven five and one. Okay. So what's all this good for? Well now we can start to see that our in our incoming image right, that's matching our kind of long form resolution, is now choo, broken up into one, two, three, four, it's different pieces. And in fact, if we back out here, 
we can also see that it's arranged 1, 2, 3, 4, the way that it would need to be when it outputs. So why then, right, why think about this particular way of doing this? Because like, certainly there are other ways that I could start to think about arranging this and futzing with this, and there are. But my select method of using a select in my crop down in here and feeding all of that from my null means that if for any reason if I change this image, right, so let's like grab a different image here, we've created a pipeline for how we're actually going to divvy all of this up. So while I'm selecting different images every time here, it's not difficult to imagine a scenario where we have a piece of software, right? We have our application that we've built, and a part of what it does is the routing of getting video to this particular output module. And then all we have to do is drive this thing to make all this work, right? So let's imagine um, something like this. Like we might imagine there's a select here, and this select is actually the, what ends up driving what's happening here. So out here someplace in the ether and, you know, probably not in our interface, right? So it would probably be, well, that might be in, well, well, let's imagine that we've got another base, right? We've got a base here that is uh, video playback. And that's what's actually going on in here. So let's copy this and paste this in here. Ditch this for a hot second. So we could imagine that we're actually driving a select like this. Right? So now, someplace else in our network, we're actually figuring out what it is that we want to do here. And that's in turn driving what's happening over here. Right? So there are lots of ways that we might think about what that means, right? If we uh, were set up in a scenario where, where we had like an AB switch, right? Maybe this is kind of like a VJ setup. We might have something that looks more like this, right? We might have two images. And we might have a cross that's between them. Our A and our B. That might terminate then in a null, which then is in turn actually what's over here. So now we could think about seeing what's coming out of our output as being driven from our cross. Right? We're move really, we can move left and right in that. And if we look inside, we can see how that moves us between our two images. So this gives us lots of different options, especially when we start to think about the really complicated and, uh, you know, fussy effort of understanding how it is that we're, we're routing and passing all of our video. Now, the one thing this doesn't take into account for, right, is that the kind of assumption here is that at this particular junction is that we only have two displays attached and these displays are of equal size. And in fact, that would probably not be the case, right? Because I probably wouldn't have two 4K uh, displays side by side. So for right now, we're going to let go of the fact that this is like not quite totally right, right? Because that's a problem that we're beginning to be able to actually pull apart and understand how to solve. The important takeaway here is realizing that we can actually build a whole module here that's going to simulate our screen distribution and allow us just to pass it a piece of video that's actually being controlled from some other place inside of our network. And it's going to do the hard work of divvying that up and figuring out which display or which quadrant that we're going to output to. Right? And the big takeaway message here is thinking about the fact that we're going to want our window, right, our kind of ultimate perform window to live all together in a single window component. So that way we draw one window that spans multiple displays and it's uh, figured out very smartly the way that we're doing all of our arrangement and distribution to make that work smoothly, easily, and as elegantly as possible. Whew. All right, so that is a ton of different ideas that we've kind of like all pulled apart and like really wrestled with and like sunk our teeth into. And that's good. Um, so thank you for following along, those of you at home. Uh, don't forget that you can always check the GitHub code pack if you want to actually see how I've uh, divvied all of this up. And I will see you in class on Tuesday.
All right, everybody. Have a great night.